just take a bunch of different readings. Okay. And then what I do is write uh, the I, I write the I, I take the lowest reading because that gives me the lowest amount to give a basis off of. So go ahead and we'll do that and then we'll write write the, the reading. Because I'm on a, I was on a chip. <laughs> there we go. Well. Twenty eighteen. Gotta love so uh, paint six. meters. This was a one sixteen. Interesting, it seems like the paint's a little thicker. Well, that was thin right there over that scratch. Look around that scratch. It's hmm. Yeah, this is the problem with meters, you know. Let's see, 116 on this one. Just a second, Let's see what it is in the middle of here. Somewhere between, you know, the 116 to 112 to 118 micron range, and we're going to work on 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 3,000. One mil equals 25.4 microns. Microns. Right. That spell right? I take 25 to give me a fudge factor of 0.4. Some, a lot of times, that fudge factor will save your bacon. So, one mil. I like using this number when I'm sanding because it's more quantifiable. I have more numbers, right. it's, it's higher number. But on a factory level, um, we, I like to go in mills and then switch back and forth. So Levi, since you're the van and white, I want you to do, we'll do 10 passes of each grit. Okay. okay, we'll take one. You said 118 was the lowest number? Out there. So 118 is the lowest number. Um, again, that doesn't mean there's 118 mils of clear. That's everything. Yeah. So um, we don't want, we want to remove a very small fraction uh, as, as least as possible to get the job done. Okay. Okay, here are the red sticks. Go ahead and use, go ahead and use this one for that. We'll get you some water. So this is thousand grit. This is thousand grit. Yes. Any procedural difference with thousand grit than no, three thousand grit? No, just know that uh, it, it's a lower number. So just keep that in the back of your head. Mm -hmm. Not do this. You want to do the square? Or do you want me to just? Nah, just, just do a, a just, We'll just do a small section. Typically, yeah. thousand grit is not meant for OEM on a scratch. I wouldn't recommend that. No lower than fifteen. I already counted to ten. <laughs> okay, let's wipe it off and check. Again, we can always sand more. We yeah. can't put paint, we can't sand paint back in. Okay, we'll let that dry. And just for number purposes, let's go ahead and gauge that. Always better to be on the safe side. What about paint swell and all that jazz about measuring and weighting and... Oh yeah, it definitely has a play. Anytime you, uh, you manipulate the paint, uh, you could have possible swelling. With Polishing, swelling is more prevalent because you are warming up the paint, the mm -hmm. substructure. So the, the, the heat actually is from the lower parts, from the, the lower substructure on up. Did we move any? 114 now. Okay. And 118 was the lowest? Yeah. Okay. On the whole peak, so okay. Square. Now we'll do uh, 1500. Go ahead and 
gauge that just to see if there's a difference. We were at 116 was the last number. Uh -huh. Okay, so 114. So we have two microns here. And what was this? 114. That was four microns, right? So, four. so 114. And this was 114 as well? Yep. So two to four. Aren't we cheating here? We're only making like five quick passes. Yeah, th this is more of an exercise of what papers can do what, or what right. they can't do. What do you need to, this is why we do these right. things. So we'll know now that on this paint, five passes were removed, say two microns. It, again, that, that's all subject. You know, I, I kind of, it depends on the person yeah. behind the block. Lighten up on your pressure just a little bit. Okay, theoretically, this should be less. Yeah. What that number is, we don't know until we put a gauge on it. <laughs> so we're we gained some paint. We this is a miracle. <laughs> Again, it goes back to sometimes yeah. gauges can be a little finicky. Yeah. yeah, gauge should be only used as uh, as a good idea. They're yeah. not necessarily yeah. meant to be the end all be all. Um, I have sanded cars that I burnt through. They use a gauge, and the gauge told me I had plenty, <laughs> and I didn't have plenty. So, um, on OEM, it, unless you were the painter or unless you know the painter, it's hard to believe a gauge because it's all over the map. I, I've done cars where I've moved it a half inch, either or, and I've had 50 mils difference because it's a show car. So it has Bondo and yeah. primer and not, not necessarily a lot, but just gauge-wise a lot, gauge -wise a lot mm -hmm. you know, quite a bit of thickness. So if you're trying to make a car laser straight, you have different lows and highs and you try to make those all even. So hence the gauge. Um, OEM is where, you know, where it really is beneficial because you have less clear and you have an idea if depending on the car that some cars have more paint than others. So, and you can find that information. So mm -hmm. um, there's enough information out there, but um, to sand and polish uh, an aftermarket spray, whether it's custom or a collision shop, it's really hard to tell um, by gauge what you have. You, your final gauge is your eyes. No matter what you're doing, whether you're sanding all the way through a, a wax or a coating process is, what you see is what you get. It, it's that simple. So it's, it's the procedures and the processes and then is what you see is what you get. So now we'll do 3,000. A little more control, right? Yeah. With that. A little less pressure in that. It's because you have this fancy interface. Right. And Matt, if we can, we'll dry this off, and if you can, after we gauge it, we'll kind of scope it and see the color difference of uh, the, the different grits. 180, what did we start at? 112. Okay. There we go, 110. 112. And it could, it, it could be, since it's getting warmer in here, the paint could be warming up and swelling slightly. Yeah, I'm getting to 112 yeah. so. so next to nothing. Yeah. Next to nothing. Okay. So now with this and this, we're gonna have to go the next grit to finish. So we're gonna have to go 15 on here. Um, and then to get closer to the two. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's best to finish all the way out. So we'll take the fifth, go ahead and take the 15 Levi. And we were at 114. So yeah. let's try to stay in that spot. So 
So if we remove 10 strokes on this, we want to go with 20 on the next grip. We want to do about 50% more passes so we can know that we've gotten out the, the scratch pattern. Again, for the average consumer, would not recommend going to a thousand. Okay, let's look at the color of the scratch pattern. It looks pretty even. Yeah. Actually, you, you actually did a pretty good job there. So now let's do 2,000 on that spot. Now we'll do just each quadrant and we'll finish it out. Let's, let's gauge this first just to see where we're at here. And Matt, you don't have to buy a super expensive gauge unless you have a carbon fiber car. Which I um, do. Yeah. You might have to buy an expensive gauge, um, but um, you can use buy a cheaper gauge. I don't think they're as accurate, but they're within budget. Mm -hmm. um, you can find them for between like fifty and one hundred and fifty dollars, and that's why I don't like expensive gauges. Okay. So last number I got was a one twelve. Okay. So that was two thousand. Yeah. So we were able to do or fifteen. Yeah, that was two thousand. Yeah, fifteen and two, 15 and, and we were only removed two microns. Yeah. So now with three, we probably won't even be able to measure. So you're using that block, correct? Yeah. Probably not even be able to measure um, anything. So is that a general formula for, if I'm doing 1,000, I do five passes, I do 10, 10 passes at 1,500, and then I would do About, 20 passes yeah, on... Yeah, on, 20 passes or maybe a couple more. Depend, again, it, it depends on, um, you know, the paint, you know, and how it's, your, how it's sanding off. Some paints sand easier, some paints uh, sand a little bit, or a little bit harder to use. But, if we look at the color consistency yeah. as compared to all of them, we're about the same color yeah. as that. Yeah. So oh, theoretically, when we'll buff it out, we'll see what it looks like, but theoretically, that's probably where we need to be. We don't, you know, is there any stray scratches or things like that? No, I don't think so. But this is about generally, for the average user, what I would consider improved, um, you know, that would be the safe thing to do, um, would be a 2,000 and a 3,000, um, depending on your skill set, then 15 and 1,000, um, and then, you know, whatever. But uh, that is the general rule of thumb has always been don't go lower than 15 and only remove a minimal. That, that has always been a discussion. How much do we remove on OEM car? Um, I've heard no more than 0.5 uh, or half a mil. Um, so whether that's true or not, I don't. I don't have proof, uh, and I don't know if anybody does. Um, if that's a true assessment or not, again, it depends how you take care of the car. Is it garage? Is it not garage? Does the exposure to the sun, the UVs? Um, I've seen paint failure happen right away, and then I've also seen cars that um, don't aren't waxed, aren't protected, aren't coated. Um, you know, go for years and years and years and years and years without any paint failure, not because of sanding, but you know, natural conditions. So it, it's a, it, that is you can you can write a book on that. So <laughs> you put that on the internet, and you'll get all kinds of. Uh, everybody's opinions so this is just my opinion whether that means anything or not I don't know <laughs> okay so will 3,000 that guy yeah. man you, you think you're getting heat up to now you wait till you release some of this information <laughs> watch out <laughs> And again, man, if there's something you don't want me to say, just no. let me know. I don't give a crap about any about that. That's why I get in trouble. I'm a rebel in the industry. <laughs> I'm okay. a rebel in this world. <laughs> <laughs> now we did three, yeah. so we don't need to do that. All right. 
Let's buff it out. Okay. We'll, we'll take all the tape off. So wait, say that again. So the 1500 you don't need to do three on? I guess we do. Yeah. No, oh. we still do, yeah. Okay, okay. well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I thought there was something secret about 15. No, 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 there wasn't. Or should we just do three? Let's just do three. Okay. Yeah, no, let's stick with one. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're, on, we're on camera here. We gotta, we we're gotta, on camera, gotta I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. We gotta follow the rules. If we were in a shop, we uh, just do it. Off camera, watch out. Okay, I'll let you do it. Yeah. Stick to the rules, stick to the rules. <laughs> It is amazing the difference in how the different grits sound. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah. I thought you were full of crap there in the beginning. Oh, no. It's, no, no, no. It's weird when you start hearing you're used to the sound or something similar or polish or sound. This is what I want you to do. We're going to stay in that same area with yeah. the 2000 again. Okay. But I want you to close your eyes. Okay. But, and listen. Okay, stop. Do you notice the difference? Yeah. Less squeak. Less squeak. Less squeak. Less squeak. Squeak means you're going too fast? Squeak means too much pressure, normally. Mm. So, by closing your eyes and letting your fingers letting do your the work, kind of feel between the tape. you sand it better. Yeah. Crazy. Were you able to get that, the sound? Yeah, definitely. That's why I have people stand with their eyes closed. And that's why with, with my limitations or, or disabilities yeah. with my one eye and, and my cerebral palsy. When I was born, I, I've always been more tactile. I've had to. Yeah. So this is where the sanding really plays to my, my set, my skill set is I feel things really differently. I'm able to, it, it just, it just clicks. I can see things and it clicks. So I've been able to teach my body, okay, if I let up on the pressure, it, it, it's going to be more consistent and I can feel that better. And that's why we went with an acry acrylic um, and then a foam is we have a, a, a core that doesn't flex, it doesn't move. So what you feel is what you get. Yeah. So then we add the foam, we add a little bit of cushion, and then you're able to feel that much like same reason the intermediate intermediate well. pad yeah, yeah yeah less cut you can feel you have some absorption there um, but very similar principles to the the sanding block again sanding and polishing is the exact same thing just different different ways to get there yeah. but it does the same it does essentially the same thing we'll do 3000 over this guy mm -hmm. finish it and really try to focus in on less pressure, sm smaller movements, kind of a jitterbug, and just guide, guide the block. How'd that feel? Good. And again, there, there is a little more, uh, little more leeway in with the, the, in the, in the, with the, the, the cushion. Color-wise, it's all consistent. Yeah. Um, let's 3,000 this a little bit larger area. area. Yeah. Okay, now we'll go ahead and Pull the tape off. We'll go ahead and use alcohol and remove that. We don't want that clogging up the pad. So tape residue will yeah. affect our polishing. Yeah, already. absolutely. Anything that's on the surface that can be picked up into the pad is is really essentially no good. The, the microfiber pad can pick it up, but it also gets stuck in the pad. So a good clean wipe with a paint cleaner is, uh, is the way to go. Does our patches look like now? 
So this is 1,000 up to three. So 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 3,000. Yes. This was 1,500, 2,000, 3,000. This was 2,000, 3,000. That was just 3,000. Exactly. Now you're really messing everybody up putting glass cleaner on the, uh, on the paint. Is this a non-abrasive type cleaner? Um, I don't know. <laughs> cleans the surface. We're going to compound it anyway, so um, I mean, you could use a specialty cleaner. I love my spray wood though. It's cheap, it's effective, and you can buy it at Costco in quantity. So. And it's we can clean, and that's what we mm -hmm. can do. Tr try the, have you ever done like the scrub effect? Yep. Okay, let's try the scrub effect. Scrubbing on edge or scrubbing No, flat? just scrubbing flat. Just, we're really trying to hone in on a certain defect. Okay, let's see where you're at. Warm? Yeah. But that's to be expected. No, I don't think it's out of the realm. Oh. Hang out in that area. Yeah. And so that was that was short cycle, four or five passes. Yeah. Yeah. Is Jeskar a diminishing compound? I think it is. It's diminishing, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. I'm able to polish it out pretty yeah. good. Yeah. But that brings a whole nother discussion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know, I didn't yeah. want I didn't mean to go there. Yeah, that brings a whole but nother discussion. We got We've got maybe just right in here, a little bit, but not much. You can okay, let's, see the let's use the scan grip. And I, I typically use a headlamp. Yeah, and I do too. Um, you know. And can we, can we plug in that light too? Again, heavy, heavy consistent pressure, very quick. Better, worse, yeah, or the same? Better. No, that's better. Okay, how come that's better? Okay, so more compound or less compound? Less compound. Less, less compound. More pressure. More pressure, faster passes. Less residue? Exactly. So less and scouring yeah, from less the scouring. Clear. When you go slow, my thought process, and I could be totally wrong, is you're picking up more. Residue. Okay. So wouldn't we want a non-diminishing polish for that to do that type of See, short ag cycle? Again, I don't think it matters because typically with the mindset, we'd never do that with a diminishing abrasive. Right, because you it's never get... Longer cycle. But I guess if you never get into the longer cycle, then it doesn't matter, right? You're, you're, you're using whatever the initial bite of the, of the compound and exactly. then that's... Exactly. I, I am, I am, again, I'm more focused on my technique than I am on my product. Where th what I just did, that's what normally is used for like a SMAT technology in McGuire's, yeah. Yeah. where the abrasive is essentially already broken broken down essentially into more finer particles whatever um, but I just did it with a diminishing abrasive so the thought process again back to that is I'm able to rapidly remove the scratches but I haven't a consistent fast pattern right. so what I did is I literally watched yeah, my compound through, I was looking through the compound haze to see where I was at. So when I polish, I'm always looking, trying to look through it. Yeah. I could care less about mm, what the pattern is because I know if my pressure is even, I'm locked, I can concentrate r really what's going on as opposed to yeah. 
the other stuff. So we'll. we'll so if you've ever gotten in the zone, that's when you notice that. Like when you're yeah. in that Zen moment on it, that's when you can see. But there, again, you have to. But again, get there to get there. It's again, it's paint dependent. Yeah. I mean, I've been on cars and projects and panels where anything I throw at it, you know, all my 18 years of of doing this at a you know more higher level, I'm just as bad as the newbie. Yeah. It's just sometimes it's just it's a real pain and. Uh, that's when the skills really come into play and focusing on, okay, everything you do has consequences. So I see a lot of detailers, they change four or five things at once. They change, they're always quick to change a compound or a polish or a pad when, what if we just let it cool down, blow out the pad, put it back on the paint? Because if we have product already on the pad, Maybe we only need some residuals left of what's left. Maybe too much polish because once we add polish or compound, we're, we're, we're back to the recutting stage. So where, maybe we just need just a little bit of kick. Not much, just a little bit. But couldn't we, can't you just, and I hate the, sound good enough garage on on you here but couldn't we just just do something and then walk away you know as like far as like just get it better and walk away yeah I mean, you know yeah i mean that's all boils down to what you're looking for and right. what you're trying to accomplish like if you're competing in a riddler award yeah. or something there's yeah. going to be a different standard yeah. than yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm polishing my pickup yeah. truck yeah now now, looking at this, if it looks this good and this consistent on a black car, on a light color car, you can walk away. Right. You, yeah. The, you're not, I, I shouldn't say not, most likely you're never, ever going to see this. Right. And on okay. a silver Audi, yeah. you know. Or on, a, on a, even on your Blue Raptor. Right. A, a, I mean, there's no way you're going to be able to see it. I mean, if you catch in the right light on a white, on your white Raptor. Yeah. Now we're going to do that cycle again by using again the residuals by blowing it out. Right. I'm going to slow my machine speed down. And the thought process behind this is less violent movement of the machine, of this head. I'm going to quickly blow it out. Again, this is just, we're just having fun now, but if I get down to where I can see, we'll just make a quick pass. It's probably going to be the same, but it might not. Better, worse, or the same? Looks clear, it's better. Looks sharper. Compound, cutting pad. Yeah, that looks amazing. Hmm. Matt, you wanna come take a look at it? Let's see. Man, you really need some polishing racks on your wall. Or a cart. <laughs> We'll get to that. <laughs> I don't like carts because I have to put it somewhere. I know, I know. I was just giving you an option. Mm -hmm. It's all about options. You guys are all about function. I like form. That looks fantastic. Not bad. Not yeah. good, but not bad. Yeah. So now we can do a quick, bzz, bzz, I mean, you, on a black car, eh, recommend it. On a dark colored car, yeah. But it's quick, it's consistent, it's in, it's out. I can, let's take the residuals, what we have here, yeah. do a quick pass. We'll, bl we'll blow it out. It may not even look any better. I'm not gonna add any product. Mm -hmm. 
Now, when you get into curves like this, it's hard to keep that pressure even, so yeah. the majority of your tick marks are gonna be in areas like this. Um, what I like to do in areas like this is kind of smash it down and evenly go across it. Only using the residuals. I, ha I still have polish on there. Yeah. The abrasive set is probably hardly there. As long as I'm not dusting, I should be okay. And to my eye, that, mm. that doesn't look good, but it doesn't look bad. No, it's... It's got, it's added the, added the gloss. Send it right. out the door. They <laughs> smack technology and different, different abrasive set and do the exact same thing. I actually use this like smack technology is supposed to be used, but yeah, okay. it's, it's the idea of pressure, quick movement, letting the abrasives do what they need to do and that, then, then, and then stop. Right. I, I think the abrasive sets Nowadays, and the chemicals are so good and so refined that we don't need to over polish because they're over, they, they do their thing and then they're done. Yeah. So let them do their thing and be done. Go home, right? No one wants to work. Hey, even I, yeah, even, even though I'm doing this for fun, I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to either. I mean, when you're 18 hours into polishing, you don't want to be done. Or 36, like I've done. All right. <laughs> It, it, it's not fun, but yeah, you can get a little more finicky, maybe, maybe not. Again, it, it's paint dependent, mm -hmm. but we did that with two pads and a compound. Oh, How's that paint. look with the Phoenix? Oh, that's good. Not bad. Not bad. Not good. Definitely not good. Yeah, not bad. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when you tell a customer, "How's my car?" Well, it's not good. Yeah. Well, it's not bad. Yeah. They're like, yeah, okay. Again, it's like, how, how, how anal do we actually have to go when it comes down to it? We, we almost have to, we're our own worst enemies as professionals. Mm -hmm. that, that, we didn't sand the whole panel either. You know? Yeah. And to add another thing, I've never used Jeskart compound. Right. It, because it's in the, my, it's in the process. If you understand abrasive set, and how they work, it doesn't really matter what right. you use. See, the beauty, the thing I like about Jess Car is, is it's easy for an amateur, yeah. average Joe yeah. to pick up and yeah. get a decent result, mm -hmm. finishes down decently, it doesn't dust. Yeah. But, um, but I doubt it says, um, I don't want to say pliable, but as yeah. universal as some of the McGuire stuff where yeah. you can yeah. water it down or change how much you're using. It's just but glob it on there and you go. Can, you can essentially do all the things you do with McGuire's. You can do it with that, too. Yeah. You can dummy it down. You can juice it in a bottle. You can whatever you want to do. So yep. my, my point is pick a system. If it works for you, yep. it works for you. You know, a Jess car, a McGuire's, uh, you know, some of the other lines out there are really high quality stuff. That's why they're expensive. Yeah. And they're, they're going to work. They're going to get you the results. Right. Now, do those work differently than McGuire's? Yeah, there's, there's differences, but right. they do the same job. They do the same thing. Yeah. Technique, not product. You guys flying out today? What happens when the when the force pulls you back? Your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor. The floor. Foot to the floor.